I wanted to finish today by reflecting on the project that's occupied uh, much of our time, much of my time in my first months as chairman, delivering quality first. This was the name given by the Director General to the exercise designed to implement the strategy set by the Trust and to save the BBC the money it needs in order to implement its licence fee settlement. The conclusions we reach on DQF will determine the shape of the B BBC between now and 2017, and they'll have a considerable impact on its ability to provide the range of inspirational programming that we want. That means that this isn't simply a managerial process or one about making cuts. The choices we make about where to spend the licence fee go to the heart of what the BBC is about, including the tension that exists, as I've just said, between one objective to be distinctive and the other to maintain a broad reach. Our public consultation closed at Christmas and we've published our initial conclusions today. In general, we remain of the view that the BBC's man management's approach is correct and we agree they should proceed with the great majority of the changes that they've proposed. It makes sense to make the maximum possible savings through off-air efficiencies to protect the Director General's five editorial priorities, to maintain investment in the peak schedules of flagships like BBC One and Radio Four that bring the greatest value to the greatest number of people. This is money that can help to increase ambition and innovation in those schedules wherever possible. However, our consultation and our research have raised real concerns that some aspects of the plans as they stand would have a disproportionate impact on its local and regional output and the contribution such output makes to the most important priority for the BBC, its journalism. While the BBC needs to reduce costs in these areas, just as it does everywhere else, we agree that local and regional services in England provide something unique for audiences that can otherwise be neglected by the mainstream media. The BBC can't afford to get these changes wrong. So we've asked the management to look again at the planned cuts to local radio, to see if they can find more money to protect the local identity of services to scale back the plans for local stations to share their afternoon content with their neighbours, although we accept that in some cases that might still be the best option. To ensure that they have adequately staffed newsrooms and to give them a bit more freedom to protect some of their more specialist and con content out of peak, whether it be rugby league or specialist music. We've also asked for a rethink of the plans for merging regional current affairs programmes in England into super regions. We want to see a plan that will preserve the regional integrity and investigative quality of this programming, which no other broadcaster provides. In total, we expect these changes to cost the BBC no more than about £10 million. We've asked the executive to bring us new proposals along with suggestions for how they might save the money from non-content budgets. Meanwhile, we'll continue to analyze the detailed responses to our consultation, to work with Ofcom to test the regulatory impact of the changes and to complete our ongoing reviews of English local radio and the Asian network so that we can publish our final conclu conclusions on the whole uh, delivering quality first plan uh, in the spring. This hasn't been an easy process and it doesn't end here. There'll be more work for the Trust to do in future years, not least to make sure that efficiency savings don't end up compromising the sort of standards we expect, particularly in news. But the need for budgetary rigour at the BBC should not plunge us 
all into morale-sapping gloom. Nor should the sense that for some time ahead, here in Britain and in our neighbourhood, we'll be living in more austere times. We should stand for square against any decline into down-at-heel mediocrity. We should make a bold assertion of excellence and demonstrate that whatever the GDP figures, Britain is home to some of the finest cultural institution, institutions in the world, including, in my view, its greatest broadcaster. Thank you very much.